Hey guys, Graham from the Pallid Cast here. I'm making a tutorial video for Tabletop Simulator Arkham Horror uh, if you aren't very familiar with it. So if you have just downloaded Tabletop Sim for 10 bucks on a Steam sale, or if you already have Tabletop but you've never played Arkham on it, I'm going to get you up and running. So uh, pardon the kind of jankiness of the video here. I think the necessity is that I have to go full screen with my monitor. So when you first open up Tabletop Sim, we got to get to the Super Complete mod. So first you hit Create. And then um, if you... What am I thinking of here? Uh, if you're playing by yourself, you do single player. If you want to play with your friends across the country, you do multiplayer. You'll create a server and then... Uh, you'll host their game. So today I'm just playing by myself, so I'm going to click single player. And then you got to find the super complete edition. This is the ideal mod for Arkham Horror. So you click on Workshop, and then assuming that you don't have anything here yet, uh, you click on Browse. Um, and that's going to bring up uh, a Steam window. And where is it? Oh, the search is right here. Search Tabletop Simulator, top right corner, and you're going to type in Arkham Super Complete. And the very first thing to show up is the Super Complete Edition for Arkham Horror LCG made by Dran. This is the one you want, so make sure that you subscribe to it. Uh, I can't remember if your computer spends a minute downloading some stuff. Uh, there's also a Korean version, so that's awesome. Uh, but anyway, once you've got that mod subscribed to, then you can go back into Tabletop, and then you will click on the Super Complete Edition. And let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, this is a really nice way to be able to play with uh, like friends that don't live nearby, or even if they do, maybe you're just a game on a work night, and... Uh, it's more convenient for you guys to do that than drive around town or whatever. So, uh, the nature of Tabletop Sim is that it loads like a billion individual objects. So, the more complicated your board gets, the more time it takes to load. Um, this is also going to test your graphics card pretty heavily. So, if you have like an older graphics card or are just using the graphics processor that's uh, inside of your uh, like your processor, your AMD or your Intel chip, then it's gonna it might take a long time to load. Um, if you have like an actual graphics card, then I think you're gonna be a lot happier with the results. I have a graphics card from 2015, I think, and it works great with tabletop sim. It takes about 30 seconds to load the most complex board states. I'm really happy with it. So anyway, you use uh, W A S D to move around. Uh, with the mouse, left click is select, right click is grab the table and pivot it, uh, or grab the screen, I should say. And then if you have a mouse scroller button, that's like a like a click and drag move, although it's kind of being wonky for me right now, but that's my mouse. So anyway, um, also to get an overview of the table, you can hit space bar, and that's going to bring you back center. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. So um, first we're going to set up the scenarios and the thing that makes this mod so good is that you can just hit place. Uh, this is a new edition as of spring of 2019 and like boy howdy is this the greatest thing ever. So we're gonna play Midnight Masks. I'm super excited. Um, I am trying out a solo deck of some kind and so I'm gonna do standalone Midnight Masks. So I'm gonna hit place on the Night of the Zealot campaign. And what's this? Oh, it populates this area with the different scenarios. And then it's like, well, I'm playing Midnight Masks. So, boom! Look at this! Instant map! How amazing! This is the greatest thing ever! Um, if you said, no, nope, not Midnight Masks, I lied. I meant to play uh, the Path to Carcosa. Boom, you hit Path. And then you're like, uh, when I said Midnight Mask, I meant Pallid Mask. And you hit Pallid Mask, and it starts setting you up. Uh, obviously, no map for this one because it's uh, the Pallid Mask, and you have to build the map as you go. So, um, 
So yeah, like I said, we're gonna play Midnight Masks. So one, two, um, and my shoe is now buckled. Look at that, real, real swell. So um, you know, I'm gonna switch cameras a little bit. Um, let's see here. I think this is the one that I want now. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Things are looking good. Now I can look at my show notes and you don't have to see them. Um, so once you have this map out, then you really need to go in and um, check out the setup instructions. So first, you can see that we've got a campaign log. You can click on any of the, click on any of the text boxes and say whatever you need. Um, now, if you are like, I'm about, I typed in some notes, uh, I have a hat and now I want to like move the screen with WASD. And if you start doing that, it doesn't move you anywhere because you're still in the text box. So you do need to click on the table first before you can move around. So, uh, we're doing midnight masks. So this is the campaign guide. You can see when you hover over the name. It says one out of eight, Night of the Zealot Campaign Guide. That means there's eight pages, and you can use page up and page down to cycle through these. Uh, also, if you can't read this very well, then you're gonna use the Alt key. If you hold down Alt, it zooms in on whatever it is you're looking at, um, which is real swell, and then you can still hit page up and page down. Whatever your mouse is hovering over is what it's going to cycle through. Uh, last note on cycling these things, this is called States. So there are eight states for this campaign guide. And if I want to fast forward to page four, while I'm hovering, I can press the number four um, on just the regular number keys, not the, the keypad to the right, just the regular number keys. And that will bounce you around the campaign guide really nicely. So cool. So we go to Midnight Masks and uh, we read the introduction with some spooky music on in the background because we're getting into uh, the feeling of everything. So we've, let's see, I'm going through setup. It's already assembled the a counter deck. Uh, the cultist deck is already assembled as well. We have to remove one of the downtown locations and one of the south side locations from the game. Um, and then there's only one player in the game, so no changes are made. Page down to the next page. Um, if your house is burned to the ground, I don't think it has for standalone. It actually doesn't have standalone rules for this. That's okay. Um, we'll say that our house is still standing and, um, that's it. So, uh, all that we have to do here is we are going to, um, randomize these locations and remove one from the game. So, uh, the easiest way to do that is to make them in a stack. You know that it's a stack because when you hover over it, it says the number two with an image that suggests that there's sort of a deck there. Then you're going to hit the R key for shuffle. Another way to do that is to click and hold, which is going to pick up an entire stack and then shake the mouse. Uh, but yes, if you hit R, that's going to shuffle. So I'm going to hit R a couple times to make me feel real good about it. And then I'm going to remove this. I'm going to do the same thing down here at south side, remove that. Uh, and then these are going to go in the set of, or I mean, they're removed from the game, so I'm just going to move them up here. Um, what, uh, let's see what else. Oh, um, the setup for this mod is really good, but every once in a while there'll be like a mistake made. So what you want to do is double check your connections. Um, on the bottom of each location card, you can just see at a glance how many lo other locations this is connected to. So your house is connected to one because there's only one icon. Rivertown is connected to five, and so you're going to make sure that there are five connectors touching Rivertown. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Boom, look at that. Uh, Southside, same thing. St. Mary's, one, two, three, four for Miskatonic University. Uh, two, 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 one for the graveyard, one for your house. So we are good to go. Um, the, uh, oh, I wanted to um, point out when I was shuffling these stacks here. Uh, if you just click and drag, you take the top card of a stack. 
if you we shuffle it up, if we want to move the entire stack, you click and hold until it pops up like that, and then you can move it around. So there you have it. Um, so I think that's most of our setup. We got to get our investigator set up. Don't we? So let's do that next. Um, in the bottom right hand corner of the table is this handy dandy Arkham DB deck builder coded by Grabin. That's a cute name. Uh, so this is what we're going to use. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do is actually go into a different tab. So let me show you what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, we'll do this one. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, we got to get rid of this. Um, all right, there you go. This is what I'm looking at. Uh, so I'm going to move over to my Arkham DB deck builder, and uh, I can see that here's my Ursula deck that I want to use. Uh, it's fully outfitted with a cool 35 experience. Um, now, it, I want to note really quick that I only have one basic weakness in here, and for standalone, I would need three more basic weaknesses. Um, so... I will come back to that. Uh, actually, you know what? For the sake of sanity, I'm going to drop this down to 29 experience because that is going to feel better for me. Um, all right. Here we go. So this is the deck I want to use. In the URL at the top of my browser, um, it says ArkhamDB slash deck slash view and then a six-digit number. This six-digit number is the number that you need. So I'm going to copy that. Then let's bounce back into Tabletop Simulator. Uh, let me switch cameras for that. Okay, sweet. Um, and we're going to click Load Cards on the left. And that's going to load a stack of cards. Again, it's going to test your processor abilities. If um, everyone needs to use this, then you know it's kind of worth it, right? So then, under Arkham DB ID, you're gonna enter in this number. Um, I should clarify that. Let me go back to the other screen really quick. Um, if you here we are. Um, so this is I went to my decks, found my deck, and. I uh, just clicked on the name. I didn't click edit. I just wanted to click on the name of the deck. And so that brought me to the view page where I can't edit my deck. I can only view it. This is called a private deck list. And uh, when we go into Tabletop Simulator, we can see that it says private deck here. We want that to match up. If I click on this, now it's a public deck and it's going to search a different database for the deck. Um, Let's say that I'm playing someone else's deck. I go to Arkham DB. Uh, I go Joe Diamond PI Staker Hard Mode Now Improved. That's a lot of words, but it's a popular deck list, so here you go. Um, and this is a public deck list. It's been published. That's the big difference, is that this is the published version of this deck. So I could find that uh, number that I need. But it's kind of embedded in the in the URL now, so it's decklist slash view slash number, and then the add on slash. Here's the the name of the deck. So um, if you wanted to use someone else's decklist that you found already published, you would want to use uh, that number. Uh, but I am using my six digit version that was on the view page of a private deck, and uh, so there you go. So I'm gonna hit build it. I'm going to give my computer about five, six seconds here. Um, again, if your computer is faster, bully for you. If it's not, here we are. So um, this is my deck, and I'm going to bring it over to my play area. You can see my name um, down here, my uh, like tabletop simulator name. Uh, so this is my deck. Um, it comes with one permanent, which is Relic Hunter. And then your draw stack is going to go on your draw pile. Now, here's the thing. I said I was doing standalone, and I 
need more basic weaknesses, right? Uh, well, you can add a random weakness by going to the all weaknesses stack and shuffling this guy up, drawing the top card, and then copy and paste that card. So I just I'm just going to add internal injury to my deck. You want to copy it because if someone else at the table it is going to need to build their deck. Remember that tabletop sim is drawing from these these two stacks here. Um, so it's important to keep one copy of each card in these stacks. So don't just take it out. You want to copy things. Um, so I'm adding internal injury. What else am I going to add? Uh, 13th vision is going to be one that I add here. So we're going to keep a copy of that in here. Um, so I needed to add one for 10 XP and one for 20 XP. So that's good enough for me. Um, so again, let's zoom back into my play area here. And I'm adding these two to my deck. I'm hitting R to shuffle, or you can pick up the deck and shake it with your mouse if you like. Um, all right, let's see. Oop, you know what? Let me change my uh, camera back here. Cool. So now we're now we're in nice, crisp, clean mode. Uh, we've imported our deck. Um, oh, I didn't show you that. Uh, you know, like this permanent came in face down. You can, when you're holding an object, you can press F to flip it over uh, to the other side. Uh, or if you're hovering over something, you can just hit F to flip it. Um, okay, so we've got our deck here, but you'll notice that there's no like Ursula Investigator card. So in order to get one of those, you got to go over here to the right. And she's under Forgotten Age. Comes with the action trackers, her little Investigator card, her like ID with her power. And then there's three starter decks inside of this chest, um, it looks like. Um, or maybe, you know, there's three objects in here. One is her starter deck, and then one is her signature weakness and her signature asset. So, uh, But these are already included if you use the Arkham DB deck builder, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and then these action trackers, you actually don't need to bring these with if you don't want. I'm going to show you where to get these. So... Uh, I highlighted Ursula and then I copied her. I prefer copying and pasting instead of just dragging stuff around and moving it because Tabletop Sim has this knack to like let the physics get screwed up and then like magically your stuff is like fly it like flew off the table or gets buried under other objects. So if you copy things, that means that if something goes awry, you can always just go back to the source and copy it again. Uh, so let's go back over to our play area and I'm going to hit paste. It's going to drop it where my mouse was hovering and you can drop Ursula Downs right in her investigator spot. And then uh, we're going to start our scenario at my house. So Ursula's little card goes right there. Um, I think we're pretty much set up and ready to play. So first let's, um, Let's learn how to do stuff. So like I said, left click, click and drag. Um, F is gonna flip locations, or flip cards. So here's your house, I'm here, I'm gonna flip it. Um, it will automatically populate clues the first time that a location drops down face up on this center play area. It will populate those based on this number of investigators playing. So uh, you can left click on this to raise the number or right click on it to lower the number. Uh, so I'm playing with only one investigator, which I should have set before I flip this over. So I should only have one clue at this location. So I'm gonna pick up this clue, drag it over here, and while I'm holding it, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna hit the delete key. And that just gets rid of it. Uh, if it's on the table and you want to hover and then hit delete, that's okay. But know that it can be um, nasty if you're like trying to delete a token just by hovering over it. And if you're, you know, if you're zoomed out a little bit, you're, you mouse over just the wrong spot 
and then you end up deleting the card instead, that's hard to get the cards back, like the locations and stuff. Um, so it's probably better if you like are holding the actual object, and that way you're guaranteed to delete exactly what you need. Um, again, I'm copying and pasting this clue thing, and that makes life really easy for me. I really like that. Um, all right, so uh, my let's let's start taking some actions here. Um, so my first action is Ursula. Oh, you know what? I need an opening hand. So before we do that. Um, like I said, R is going to shuffle the deck. We want five resources, but um, no damage or horror. So I'm going to left click on resources. I could right click to lower it. This is probably the best way to manage your money. Uh, same thing goes for damage and horror. If you have uh, ally assets or enemies, um, you can drag tokens from this token pool over here. If you have abilities that you want to keep track of or charges or supplies or things you can use these resource tokens um, so I'm gonna draw my opening hand of five cards when you want to draw cards you can uh, like one way to do it is to draw the card flip it over and then add it to your hand by dragging it all the way to the bottom of the screen that's a little bit slow though so what you can do is when you hover over a stack you press the number of cards that you want to draw so if I want to draw three cards or four cards in this case I hit the number four on the keypad and I will draw four cards look at that so this is my uh, first part of my mulligan now I did get one of my weaknesses here so I get to draw an extra card something I like to do is move my cards, click and drag them and move them to the left side of my hand if I'm going to send them back. And then, so that I, it's easier for me to see and parse the information, I actually hit F while hovering over that card so it flips face down in my hand. So I can clearly see that I need to draw one more card to be up to five, which I do. Um, so some things that I like in this opening hand, I love Pathfinder and I love Jake Williams. Uh, I'm going to keep these two assets. Uh, assets are always good in your opening hand, right? So now I'm going to uh, flip these cards down, or alternatively, if you would rather, you know, with these kinds of cards, you can just drag them to your discard pile um, or whatever you need to do, and then you draw back up to three. Uh, so look at that. Tons of assets. Um, I got one of my... my uh, next slot items which I'm excited about because I've got my relic hunter in play so things are looking good this is a good hand um, all right so let's take some actions um, notice there I had you know my stack of cards to discard click and held so that the cards hover I pick them up as an entire stack um, if I dropped them on my deck it's going to treat them as a separate object on top of my deck uh, so you can see that the number two is just hovering there. Um, it's because the cards are not facing the same direction. So if I hit F, it's going to flip those two cards over, merge them with the rest of the deck, and now it's one big object. Uh, so then I shuffle that up, and I'm ready to play. So Ursula's first action is going to be to... Um, uh, let's play... Let's see... Um, what's a good tutorial action here? So first action, I'm going to play Jake the Snake Williams. Um, he costs me three to play. So um, I'm going to remove three resources. One, two, three. And um, he says, ignore most of the text on him, but right now it says after you reveal a location or put a new location into play, exhaust Jake Williams to draw a card. So um, I'm going to move up to Rivertown as my second action, and I reveal this new location. It comes into play. It's got a one shroud and one clue on it because there's one one person playing. Uh, so now I want to go back to my play area, and I want to note that I've used Jake's ability. My preferred way of doing it is to um, rotate cards. And I like rotating cards 45 degrees at a time. Uh, in the top of your screen, at the right of that menu bar, you see rotation degrees. You can click on that 
left click to cycle through what the different options are. So by default, you're at 15. If you're rotating by 15 degrees, it's going to take you a day and a half to do anything. Um, so I recommend going up to 45 at the minimum. Um, some people also like doing 90 degree rotates uh, every time, and that's totally fine too. Um, so I'm going to exhaust Jake Williams, show that I'm doing that. Uh, and again, you have to hover over the card, but uh, it also works if you pick up the card. Uh, so I've exhausted Jake Williams, and he draws me a card from my deck. So hover over my deck, press the number one, and I draw a card. Look at that. Uh, now I'm going to investigate. Um, so uh, I'm actually using, technically, I'm using Ursula's uh, ability here. After you move into a location, take an investigate action. I will. So Ursula is a four intellect on a one uh, shroud. Um, and one, you know what, I'm, I'm thinking about this right now. One thing I didn't do, the chaos bag is right here. And when you set up the scenario, the default chaos bag is always the chaos bag for the gathering. Two skulls, one tablet, one cultist. Um, and standard difficulty at that. So when you load, when you place a scenario, it will actually bring out um, a like chaos token card here. And so you can select your difficulty. If I want to play on, on easy, now my chaos bag is set to easy. It looks like it just adds tokens, but it actually removes the old ones as well. That's part of the macro that's on this card. So if I'm playing on standard, here we go. If I'm playing on hard because I hate myself, then here you go. Just kidding. Uh, I don't hate myself. Um, so we're on standard difficulty. Uh, something to know is, well, I don't really want to overcrowd you with information. Basically, most scenarios just have a standalone button here. Only the first scenarios of a campaign will have like the chaos bag as it shows in that campaign guide. Um, so be wary of that. You might have to load a scenario, then click the button for the chaos bag, recall the scenario, and then load the one that you want. All right, so anyway, I'm using my Ursula action to investigate. I am a four on one, and right here in the top right corner of my mat is a button that says click for chaos, and then right click to stack. So um, I'm gonna draw my chaos token, and it's a skull. What are skulls? Let's see, they're right up here, the scenario card. Minus X, highest number of doom on a cultist in play. That's a zero right now, friends. So um, I did succeed. Uh, anyone at the table can click their chaos token button to send this token back to the bank. And by default, uh, you cannot draw a token while there's tokens out. So if I'm, I took my turn, the last token I drew was a plus one, then my friend Jarvis over here wants to take his test, um, it, it sent my token back, and then it drew a new token for him, which is pretty cool. So um, that's how that works, and look at that, I got a clue. So, oop, see I selected the card instead of the clue, so I'm going to click and drag this over to my little clue area right here. And I did a thing! Um, Ursula doing cool stuff. Um, so, uh, let's say that I take the rest of my turn, which is resource, pathfinder, and then pathfinder says you can move by exhausting it, so I'm going to uh, exhaust pathfinder and move down to south side. And um, now I'm here. I started from the bottom, and now I'm here. So then we would go on to the enemy phase, there's no enemies. And in my turn, we're going to do upkeep, which means that I ready my cards. Uh, I'm using Q and E to rotate these guys. So E rotates to the right, Q rotates to the left. Uh, I draw one card by pressing the one key while hovering over the deck, and then I gain a resource. Uh, and now we go to the mythos phase. So we're going to um, shuffle up this encounter deck here, and... I'm going to add a Doom by left-clicking on this Doom Tracker, um, which 
does move around, so if you'd rather have this up here so you can have both of these areas open, that's up to you. I'm fine with the Doom right here. Um, so we go up to one Doom, and then we go back to each person's play mat, and in player order you're going to draw encounter cards. On the top left side of your play mat is a click for encounter cards. So you're going to left click on that bad boy, and uh, you drew Hunting Shadow. So I have to either spend a clue or take two damage. I will take the damage and put it on Jake. Um, so with the rule book, remember I used page up and page down to switch between states. Well, whenever you see an object that's got this little five-sided six-dot pattern, that means that there's multiple states for that. And so you can page up and page down through those as well. So I could drag two damage tokens to Jake if I wanted, or I could use one damage token and hit page down to get to two damage, or I could um, just press the number two, and that will create, uh, or that will move this to the right number of damage that I would like. So that's pretty cool. Um, now you can also right click on the chaos token button and the encounter button uh, by left clicking or right clicking on the encounter button here you're going to draw additional cards and then when you click the discard button at the top all those cards go away um, so let's say that I've got something that stays in my threat area uh, let's see what we got here uh, here's a night gone so I can move the night gaunt over to this threat area, discard my treacheries, and then uh, I fight the night gaunt. I use I've got a plan because I'm the smartest girl, and uh, I defeat the night gaunt, so I hit discard. Uh, if there is an enemy that has, oops, sorry about that. If there's an enemy that has victory points, and you defeat them, uh, they go to the victory display which I will show you is to the left of all the encounter mythos type stuff. There's a victory display area up here. So you can put all your victory cards up there. Um, I'm kind of rambling though. The point I was trying to make is if you right click on the chaos token button, you reveal another token. So let's say that I draw a chaos token and it's like a cultist and it says reveal another token. Uh, if you fail, take a horror. So then I would right click on it this time and it keeps this first token out of the bag so the probabilities are accurate. Or if you're using some of those weird Forgotten Age cards like uh, Olive McBride, she says draw three tokens, resolve two. Right? So I would draw one, uh, two, three, and I can just right click for all of those. And then it says I have to resolve two of those, so I'll take the, I'll ignore the minus four, resolve the other two. Uh, and now my Song of the Dead is doing three damage, which is really neat. Um, all right, that's most of the basic stuff for like actually playing the game. Um, let's uh, let's talk about how to end the game. So. Uh, I got to this point, but oh my gosh, my significant other got home and they're like, hey, we got to go get dinner. And I'm like, cool. So I have a couple options. One, uh, I can save the entire board state. And that I can do that by going to games and then hitting save and load and then create. Um, and... This is my solo Ursula masks run. Uh, so I can save that way. If this is a table state that I've saved before, I can go to, if it's the, the, the most recent entries uh, are to the right here. Uh, so I can either go to save and load or just click on this one here and solo Ursula masks. If I click on the options triple dot drop down, then I can go to overwrite. Um, you can also delete stuff this way. Um, so 
Now, if you don't click on the menu, you just click on the image, it will ask you to load. So you don't want to load stuff if you're trying to save, obviously, because you'll lose your save information. Uh, there's another way that you can save campaign stuff. Uh, let's say that my campaign log is all nicely filled out. I'm Graham, and I'm playing as Ursula. And I have four unspent experience and a mental trauma. Uh, so now I want to save our campaign log, but because of how messy the board is and a new pack just came out, we want to make sure that we're you know, getting the most up-to-date version of this super complete mod as possible. I'm just going to save the campaign log as its own object. So you right-click on the campaign log, not in one of the text fields. You have to just click on the log itself. And then you're going to go to Save Object. And then you, uh, you know, Solo Ursula uh, Zealot Log. Uh, so then I can save this as an individual object, which is cool. So then later on, I can just open up a fresh new tabletop simulator game. Then I can go to objects at the top, the meeple token, or the meeple logo. And then the last thing on the list is save objects. And so I can see up oh, Solar Ursula Zealot log. I want to load that as an object. So I click on it, and it's going to load right in the center of the table right here. And I say, okay, guys, look, look, I, I told you that I had uh, four experience. And you said, no, Graham, you're a liar. Proof. The proof is in the pudding. I did it. Um, campaign notes, I have a hat. Very important. You said I didn't? I did. I wrote it down. Uh, you can also do the same thing with your deck as an object. If you don't want to go through the rigmarole in the future of loading this giant stack of cards. What you can do is do this once and then save your deck as an object. So I'm going to group all these cards together. Flip this. Uh, Jake the Snake, don't want to lose you. Here's a Pathfinder. I got my Relic Hunter. All the cards need to face the same direction so that it cre it's one deck. Remember that if you've got that top card and it's flipped like that, it treats it as its own separate object. And I don't want that. Um, so one big object here, and I can do the same thing. I can go to save object. It'll actually save the deck in the exact same order as well, I'm pretty sure. Um, so that's cool, Graham. I saved my object, so now me and my friends, we don't have to worry about doing the deck builder thing because we're worried about how long that takes. But I want to add new cards to my deck. What do I do? So in, at the top of the screen, our deck building options. Look at this. Um, so uh, I'm Ursula. She's got access to a bunch of yellow cards. And uh, I said, you know what? We'll be really good going into um, any scenario ever is upgraded shortcut. Uh, so here's all the cards that I can, I can choose from. I'm going to copy upgraded shortcut. And then over by my deck, I'm going to paste it. And it, I have to take out a card. So sorry, Eureka, you didn't make the cut. I've replaced Eureka with a shortcut now. Um, obviously, you can right click and then uh, click on search for decks, except this is, there it goes. Um, so yeah. There you go. A shortcut is now in my deck, and I can save that object. And so the next time I play, I load it up. I've already upgraded. Things are good. Uh, also, if you're like, you know, oh, I need to swap out uh, some level zero cards. All the level zero cards are along the left here. So let's say you're a rogue with adaptable, and you're like, I'm going to swap out my uh, hard knocks which I thought I was going to have a lot of money for, and I didn't. So instead, I would rather just have a oh, uh, hatchet man. So again, you take out the hard knocks from your deck, you copy hatchet man, you bring it over, you paste. Uh, I say copy and paste because remember, if you lose cards, this is where you can go and get them if Tabletop Simulator swallows them up. And uh, also, 
uh, let's say I'm playing Jenny and my buddy's playing Rita, uh, well, we can both have tricks. So I don't want to take the physical copy of Cheap Shot uh, and bring that over to my investigator. And then my buddy Rita goes over here and it's like, what? Who's got the Cheap Shot? Who took the Cheap Shot? I can't find it. So copy paste is the moral of that story. Um, uh, last thing I think I want to show you, I um, have been using this yellow arrow a lot. Uh, if you hit the tab key, it spawns that arrow. What's cool is it's good for coordinating with other people. So if someone's like, hey, everyone look at Silas over here, you can see that the arrow is showing up on the edge of my screen. Um, it like pops up and says like, hey, over there. Hey, look, listen, listen, I found something. It's over here. If you click and drag with tab, you also create a ruler, um, which obviously the distances don't matter, but I can you know, pretty easily point out to my friends like, hey, I mean, I could either go over to the graveyard, which cost me two actions, or I can just go to St. Mary's Hospital, which would be dope because I could heal. And you can kind of instruct your friends this way. Um, I think those are most of the basics. Uh, I have a follow-up video to this one that's more like advanced things. So if that uh, tickles your fancy, uh, go check out that other video. Otherwise, uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, comment with any questions that you have because I want to know how to make this kind of video better. And um, I'm sure that there's things that I forgot. And you're like, Graham, how did you do that one thing? Oh, well, I'll show you. Cool. So thanks for watching. Check out the Paladcast Detective Agency. It's a podcast. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and um, I don't know. I mean, that's pretty much it, right? Like, those are the big ones. So uh, go check us out, and uh, I'll catch you guys later.